Hey, and good afternoon, everyone. David Dubine here, bright to you on TV Uncensored. Let's talk about the Belt and Road Initiative, another coup by China brokering a peace deal between Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, the disputed area. Those railways are going to run west to Istanbul and across Africa. Again, the U.S. has been moved out of the way on the chessboard of that. We'll take a look at the new allegiances, alliances, and contracts with Russia and China. And one gram of gold now, 0.97 for one barrel of oil. The world has changed in front of your eyes. Talk about gold for what? Well, it will be the base for everything. Central banks scooping it up. You're told it doesn't mean anything it's a barbaric or relic and by the messaging in the west don't touch it with a 10-foot pole allows those in the east to gobble it up and encourage their citizens to buy at least one gram that way you can spread the wealth through the entire nation and guarantee on the blockchain that there's that much gold in your hands of your citizens as well as your central banks so gold four is kind of the topic for today gold for what it's going to be for everything because the petrodollar just died. If you're unaware, I'm going to move the slide forward here. Saudi Arabia has now agreed not to renew this contractual deal with the United States to provide it as the only sole means to purchase oil across the planet. And that would be predominantly for OPEC as well. What does that mean for us? Well, that sweet spot that we had in America to force everybody on the planet to hold dollars because they needed to buy energy and minerals, that's gone as of the 9th. So there was there a catastrophic drop in the stock market? No. Those who knew this was coming had already you know, moved their money. Those with money had moved. This was announced about a year ago with the formation of BRICS. Andy Sheckman and myself talked about this. Those that understood this momentum that was happening with the BRICS line nations and those pledging to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization were messaging clear a year ago plus. That big money had moved, so it's going to be just the people on the street that get shattered when you go to try to buy a gallon of gasoline. Not today, but in the future. The trend is very, very, very clear. It's going to be a continuous slow trickle selling of U.S. Treasuries from all nations who were previously required to hold U.S. dollars. They're going to move, and as you can see, they can change for any other currency or commodity now to take delivery of that oil. The realm of just U.S. dollar payments is long gone. So what happens then? Well, Saudi Arabia's petrodollar agreement and this is the thing that is going to move the world from this point forward. Now, you might think, wow, we're, you know, countries can break away from the U.S. dollar. But in reality, the Bank for International Settlements is still the one that is starting something called M-Bridge, which is a way for those commodities to be put onto the blockchain. And then, in addition, central bank digital currencies issued against that, which is then on the blockchain as a verified asset, with the same players in charge, the central bank for the central banks. If only the payments made to Stormy were made in gold, we would have been spared the investigation. This is why insatiable central bank demand has transformed the gold market Gold investors need to buy the dips. Central banks are. UBS and Goldman both revised their forecast to $2,700 an ounce by year's end. Bloomberg and Citigroup are calling for $3,000 by 2025. TD Securities said silver eyes $50 an ounce. And in 2024, gold is up 18% and silver 35%. Protect your retirement with gold or place a bullish bet on silver. Call the proud Americans of the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Mention the ADAPT 2030 channel. You're going to get some great in-class service. Also, Patriot Gold Group has a no fee for life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. No fee for life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Give them a call, 
646-7020. And also now for the seventh year in a row, Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated IRA gold dealer. 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. So is anything changing? It is to a point. But the mechanisms to control your spending, make you go to work, get on this metered life that we're in, that's not going to change. It's going to amplify. It's going to be faster because we're going to a digitized world for assets, movement of monies, and settlements between nations, companies to nations, nations to individuals that will put us on universal basic income because of all the joblessness coming. So at the very bottom there, Riyadh now will sell oil in multiple currencies, including the yuan, euros, yen, Japanese yen. And they will also trade for commodities. That's another caveat there, comma. So the world we're seeing is absolutely going to shift. Now this ditching of U.S. Treasuries is going to be a slow process because people had seen what happened to Japan when their currency dropped some 20% because they sold hundreds of billions of dollars of treasury bonds. They were penalized for doing that because after World War II, the way the U.S. dollar was set up is the base of their new nation that they could issue off of then themselves. Once they sold that base, that basement, the bedrock of their what was the currency, they're all intertwined so heavily that the value, then they had to print more and then you got this inflation. People have learned a, a, a very important lesson, at least on the banking side of things. You can't sell it all at once. There's no giant Sandman event coming. It's going to be a grain of sand man event. So this is what we're looking for here. Also, you know, the conjecture was oil was going to be the peg for one gram of gold. And it is. Well, sort of. And if we look at today's uh, exchange rate on that, gold in a gram to oil in a barrel, this is the actual conversion rate. I whited this out here and magnified it in. 0 0.9794 so it's getting close it's not exactly one for one you know stable coins can vary as well they're not always exactly one to one just depends on what kind of market contagions happening some rise some fall but in that 9798 range close enough for you know government work as they would say so this will eventually par off at one gram of gold to one barrel of oil and then they've already been talking about an enormous amount of other equivalents, like how many bushels of wheat. And they're running the gamut of it. So Russia's in control of the supply of the grains, which is working out in a tabular form of this swap on equivalent. Huge amount of African nations have oil reserves. Huge amount of African nations have mineral reserves. So in addition to that, they need food and they'll send out the raw materials. But what is it gonna be that baseline equivalent? That is pay, that this is the whole lot of cooperation. That, so Africa working with Russia and China outside the US sphere, they're gonna get a much better rate and a much better preferential treatment than anything else that the West has offered. So they're gonna go where business is best, where they're treated best. And it's really that simple. It's not about America this, bombing that, Russia this, bombing that, China this, railroading, uh, buying politicians, you know, sending an enormous amount of money in Africa. It's really just basic business. Go where you're treated best. And they're going to get a far better rate and treatment by going with the BRICS aligned nations and also intertwining themselves in that trading block and agreement. America has weaponized <laughs> weapons and money, so they're just like, you know, we've had enough of that. We want our country back. Plain and simple. And it's happening in real time. So as we go through today, I'd like to talk about a few nations in Africa and you know the movement of such. But it's so interesting that Russia's Moscow Stock Exchange immediately suspended all dollar trading and euro trading the same day, zzz, plural, so the 9th was the time that we went off the petrodollar standard. And then by the 10th, Russia had suspended all trade of US dollars and euros across their markets. Now, China probably will not do that because they're kind of in an um, economic state where they need the help themselves. Their real estate is imploding. They've had in the last couple of weeks another couple of giant bailouts that we would have seen on the equivalent in 2008 and 9 here in America. But with that throwing of dollars away, and it's a tit for tat. 
So you got BricsPay, which is running parallel to the SWIFT system. So now they can interchange between uh, nations and settlements between nations. And where does that leave us with our military? So take a look at this. This is the amount of money spent every time rounds are discharged. So you're looking at thousands of dollars per one shell, five inch caliber. And then we get into the Vulcan failing system in addition to the 25 millimeters. But look at that, six grand in a matter of seconds. And then you start to look at the higher, you know, volumes of half a million dollars or excuse me, one million dollars for different type of air system missiles. Whoa, that was $11.8 million for a single SM-3 anti-ballistic missile. How do we pay for this is the question. I really believe that we're going to roll back into something very similar to what the British Empire experienced where they had to start pulling back into their nations. The sun never set until it didn't. And we're going to have to close how many military bases and pull back to the United States because just won't be able to afford it. Like nobody else is forced now to take U.S. treasuries. Now, all of these other countries have gotten together as a big block of nations. So the U.S. really can't and Britain can't and Australia can't just point fingers and say, do what we say or we're going to sanction you. Doesn't matter. There's a, there's a completely different system that has evolved because of what was done with Russia with the sanctions. So they can go not, not even around it anymore. They're just going to move to the parallel system that is live, ongoing, and every day the functionality is increasing and more nations are moving over to that side of the playground, for a better term. If we can't afford our military, then there's no way to enforce high seas sanctions. Like, oh, you can't take the oil there. Oh. This nation can't trade with that nation. We're going to intercept the cargo. Well, we'll see. And India and Iran are using overseas shipping now for coal. So it's coming right from Russia through Iran, loading on a port, and then heading over to Western India, all outside of the U.S. control. So that was a coup right there and another like i don't see how many more times this can happen before people really awaken to the fact that the world has shifted and it will never go back humpty dumpty is never going to get super glued back together again this is the end of an era something new is evolving out of this but it's still what's interesting it's under the control of the same exact moneyed players the bank for international settlements Nothing has changed under the sun, literally, except the way you perceive it and the way money will move faster and where there's reserve currencies will now evolve. It's like milking and extracting. We come to the high apex that's being extracted and moved into the new area where the debt system can start, and then we see where it is, clearly. It's right here. Let's talk about the African Sahel for a moment. This is your new A, breadbasket of the world, as areas go offline because of you know magnetic field changes on our planet. But the amount of investment that has gone in here and this Trans-Sahel Railways, which is now the focus point of investment for Russia and China, the ports all along, especially in Sudan and Eritrea, Somaliland, there's a huge amount of Russian influence going to be plopping itself right there along with China. The U.S. has tried to stifle this, but again, all they do is just anger people now at this point. Anything that they do is just a hitting the hornet's nest with a baseball bat. And how many of these nations have you seen? Like if I talked about, let's say, Central African Republic, that has been just a continuous coup in a malaria-ridden central area with no development, still living in straw huts, no running water. And we're in 2024, and they have some massive mineral deposits. It's really... It's, Mind-boggling to the point of just knowing it's a plan when you look at these vast resources that Africa has and they're living still in straw huts and we live in these houses with air conditioning. Like if you're looking at the equivalent, like the chess move here was complete non-development to hold it for a later time, which the U.S. and these Five Eyes Nations thought they would control in Finham. But they, they're seeing the changes here. Or was it a plan where all global players had put Africa off limits to now start the new debt system in tandem, that this was the plan amongst all nations, bank for international settlements, all of Africa stays off limits until the next turning. 
where we sit now and suddenly game on Africa development, African resources, African everything. It is the century of Africa. And you have to wonder, you know, this was it all planned in advance? Put that little question there for you. So moving on to grain given to African nations free from Russia. So this, all it did was give preferential treatment to Russia now going in for contracts for others. Whatever it is, development of minerals, development of ports, natural gas, oil, doesn't really matter. But giving them free grains for sub-Saharan Africa, uh, they rediscovered markets. Indonesia, Morocco, Eritrea, or Eritrea, however you like to say that, 60 million tons since last July. So it's not like forcing them at the gun to have a coup to make sure that you sell diamonds or you sell manganese to an American company for pennies on the dollar. They're giving them free grain so now that Russian and Chinese companies can rock in and give them fair pricing, do a 30% revenue split, and then away we go with the, the development. So everything for us is going to cost a lot more because at the barrel of a gun to give us something for two cents on the dollar, when Russia is going to say, we'll give you full values when 30% split on the revenue, you guys keep 70%. That is a gargantuan shift in the world anyway. So we won't have, or they may very well might not even sell it to our markets. Hey, you treated us badly for 80 years. We don't want to sell it to you. Now, there's only a limited supply, and guess what? China and Russia are going to be their first buyers, second buyers, third buyers, and then America and the West will be the fourth or fifth if they're not even embargoed at that point. So these are some of the things to look at. Grains. Give people food. They're very happy. Before, this was a starvation zone, was it not? And now they're coming in to develop it and give the food. It's the reverse of the Sally Struthers 1980s days. We're going to come in and supply you with food, agricultural technology so you can grow. Get all of your roads so you can actually drive vehicles during the rainy season. Install hospitals, water filtration, lay pipes for you so you can have running water. Build up the cities and your telecom grids. Give you satellites so you can... And this is what they're offering. To have access to the minerals that will be exploited now out of Africa. We gave them bombs and coups and split nations in half on some uh, it's hard to even, it's not even on ethnic it was just made up just like the british did well you're you're hutu you're tutsi over here and it's the same people right it's gone on too long and it, it's come it's going to come back to roost let's say that so in addition to those not really wanting the u.s treasuries any longer at the point of us trying to buy from their markets is going to be a bit, well, sticky. So expect the life cost of everything to get absurdly higher. Moving on, not today exactly, but as we move forward every day. Can you imagine if everything rises 1% per day, half a percent per day? Do the math out. I'm not sure what it is either. It's just, it's happening and it is going to continue to move forward. It's not stopping. So the world you understand right now, within two to three years, it'll be so much higher price, but then the availability of goods is also going to be diminishing at the same time. So we're getting this split, something like this. Moving over to uh, Central African Republic, the CAR. So President uh, Archange expresses gratitude for receiving grain donations, and there's yet another your people are starving, here's free grain. This is the way the diplomacy is happening with the BRICS nations. I have not seen something like this in the United States. There's always an attachment with it with the either International Monetary Fund, World Bank. You default your loan, we get your forest. We're going to clear cut it and take our lumber industry. And again, pennies on the dollar. Oh, wait, it's zero on the dollar because you defaulted gave the money to some dictator that there was no accountability and you just gave us your forests and your fishing rights and your mineral rights and did it ever end? I mean, how impoverished are these nations? Those loans will be paid back through some of these players and through their revenue. So the stranglehold that like IMF and World Bank even had on these places to extract natural resources, they better lickety split start clear cutting because in the next few years, they're out. And also, 
Russia setting up here, the importance of developing a satellite system for the Sahel. All of that development is going straight in the poorest areas, the most parched, drenched areas. You know, the weather systems are shifting. That West African monsoon is really starting to drench Western Africa above ground water resources, you know, rainfall, and over where Yemen comes into that horn there. Those two areas are becoming incredibly wet just from above ground water. And then we got all this, you know, Nubian sandstone aquifer, the Seuss aquifer. There's hundreds of thousands, if not a million square kilometers of water just beneath the feet. They just need to get to it and start tapping those aquifers. And because Africa is surrounded so evenly on the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean, those aquifers are just going to keep refilling. It's a little bit different animal than what we have in North America. The refill rate off of those is it's going to be continuous, and I, I don't know if they could really deplete it as we understand depleted aquifers where the water table shrunk so much or declined. It's just going to continue to refill. So once they wire this out, this is where they're talking about satellite systems here. Well, what do you need satellite for? Well, it'd be good to have GPS while you're planting on 100,000 acres. That'd be nice because I can't eyeball that four miles away. How about navigation? How about tracking containers running down rail lines? This would be, and also uh, with the uranium out of Niger, these uranium mines and, you know, looking for minerals. So if they have their own satellite system, they could, you know, really hone in on where the value is in their countries and develop that out. That is the principal reason that they want to develop this satellite system. And let me throw one more here for you. The Niger invites ECOWAS to now join the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. So now they're coming together with their own trading bloc, even inside the Sahel and ECOWAS, which was, uh, you know, the different coups in like Mali and Niger, they were kind of sidelined out there. But now, oh, everybody's back together. We need to kick America and everybody from the West out of there, including Germany and England and whoever else they're France. You're out. We're coming together. Oh, we got the Alliance of the Sahel States, one trading block for the Sahel. This is the way it's going to go. Trading blocks are forming, and then Egypt is now considering the possibility of payments with Russian national currencies. Death by a thousand cuts is all we're looking at here. So Egypt jumps onto the bandwagon to now pay outside the dollar. That was one of our greatest allies, quote unquote, there to keep that Suez Canal open and allow trade and military to move through, at least the navies. That is shifting too. There's so much shift going on, it's hard to actually, you know, encapsulate what is happening. But we're going to talk more about this after the break. Come right back. See you then.